it is plus 1.23 uh, plus 0 0.40 was for the alkaline one. So again, don't get. I just got confused. So uh, you will, you you can also get confused. So just uh, make sure you are looking at the correct one. This is acidic, and for acidic, it is plus 1.23 volts. And we know that this is a typical standard hydrogen electrode because this H3O plus ions are nothing but H plus ions because obviously hydrochloric acid and hydrogen. So it will have zero. We know that standard hydrogen electrodes have electrodes have zero. So since 0 is less than plus 1.23, this will be the negative electrode and hence this will be the positive electrode. So the oxygen electrode, the left hand electrode is positive because it is greater than the hydrogen electrode. So electrons are flowing in this direction. Now use the data booklet to calculate the voltage produced by this cell. So it will be, uh, this is the lower one so we will invert the equation and then we will add so even after inverting 0 remains 0 so 1.23 plus 0 will be, will be 1.23 so this becomes plus 1.23 volts plus 1.23 volts the voltage that is being produced by the cell this is the value that we will see on the voltmeter over here now let's move to the next part uh, okay so this is another question altogether use the data booklet data from the data booklet to construct redox equations and calculate the standard cell potentials for the reactions between acidified h2o2 aqueous and potassium iodide aqueous now here there is a trick so you can either use the data for the potassium ions or the data for the iodide ions and let's see which one we'll use based on what is being reduced and what is being oxidized so for acidified H2O2, when you look at the data booklet, the we get H2O2 plus 2H plus, the H plus makes, the, makes it acidified, so this is correct, plus 2 electrons gives 2H2O. And uh, the, the electrode potential for this one is plus 1.77 volts. This half cell, it's plus 1.77 volts. Now, the other one, so, so we have to, uh, so let's write for both potassium and for iodine and then we'll see what happens. So for this, it will become... If we see K, uh, for K plus, if we look at the data booklet, it is minus 2.92, minus 2.92, the E naught value. And for I negative, we have to have two I negative. Sorry, so uh, on the left, we'll always have addition of electrons. So this will become I2 plus two electrons gives 2i negative and when I look at the value in the data booklet for this one it is plus 0 0.54 now now let's consider this the, so the first one is important because obviously acidified H2O2 nothing changing there but we can only use one of these and the reason for this is I'll just tell you so if you look at the potassium equation it is negative minus 2.92 volts is more negative than plus 1.77 volts so we will have to invert so when we invert it will mean that we are making the reaction happen between H2O2 and potassium however this is not potassium this is K plus so we cannot use this half equation because this would just give us the wrong reaction the reaction has to ha happen between K plus and H2O2 but since this equation will have to be inverted the reaction will happen between K and H2O2 which is not possible so we will erase this from here this is of no relevance to us anymore now now if you look at the, this half equation the I2 again plus 0 0.54 is less than 1.77 so we will have to invert which means H2O2 is reacting with the iodide ions and in Ki we have the iodide ions so this is the correct one so we will be using this half equation instead of the K plus half equation. So what we have to do is 
uh, we have constructed redox reactions and now we have to calculate the standard shell potentials. So first